This morning, a new business will soon make its way into the Queen City of the Mountains and why one group is pushing for legislative reform following a recent executive order from Governor Andy Bashir. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, 531 on your Tuesday morning. I'm Dakota Makris, and it's a bit chilly out there, so I hope y'all are bundled up. Let's head over to Brandon for a look at our forecast. And Brandon, it took everything in me to get out of bed this morning. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so our producer's not here because she had an emergency, so you had to produce the newscast. And I was like, wait a minute, should I go in early? I don't know, nobody's called me, so oh, well, I kind of felt bad. It got, it got a little bit busy, yeah. so uh, I didn't really have time to call you. Yeah, yeah so we're, uh, we're moving and grooving here right. this morning, and of course, some fog, so Slowing us down, the cold slowing us down, but just get up and get moving and get out of that warm bed this morning. Let's take a look at Pikeville as we look at 119 US 23 over that way. And again, foggy over near Pikeville Commons this morning. Some light traffic at the intersection 30. One of our warm spots there and in Prestonsburg, also in Logan this morning. 19 on the other end of the scale there in Jonesville in southwest Virginia. One of our cool spots. A lot of mid to upper 20s across the region this morning. Look at some spots down to the south. Middlesboro, Jonesville. Uh, Williamsburg, London, Somerset, all double digits colder than it was this time yesterday. So those temperatures sliding a little bit as the skies try to clear out. We'll head up toward about 50 degrees today. Let's call it 49 this afternoon. But again, the southwest winds will be cranking, so we may get a little bit warmer than expected. But it's going to be a nice day. Sun and clouds and then more sunshine. It's just going to be nice. Get out there and enjoy it because changes are on the way. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you. Well, the Perry County Fiscal Corp in the city of Hazard recently announced a new business is coming to the Queen City of the Mountains. Our Olivia Calfi visited the future site for the upcoming venture and has more. Pizza, games, and a new spot to hang out. The new Perry County Gaddy Town location is projected to be 12,000 square feet of pure fun. Estimated timeline for completion is uh, the fall of 2023. So we hope to hope to have that open here uh, in by the end of the year. Lawrence says we can expect construction to begin any day at the new Gaddy Town location on the East Perry development site. Adding this addition to the community is a step in the right direction. The spending that's leaving the community uh, that's, that's done uh, in our neighboring towns, um, we want to bring that here and keep those, you know, the revenues, the tax dollars, the support of our local businesses, all that we want uh, to thrive here in Hazard. He says this is an opportunity to encourage other businesses to make their way to this part of the region. When I look at things in my position from a retail project to a downtown project or an industrial development type project, <clears throat> it's all intertwined. Uh, I think it all kind of goes together and builds a stronger community. Um, we create new jobs, you got to have places to go shop and, and, and eat or hopefully you know, uh, more opportunities to buy clothes, those kind of things. That was Olivia Calfee reporting. Lawrence says the project was introduced by a private developer with ties to the area who saw a need and was able to make it happen. He also explained Hazard and Perry County have the people and the resources to help anyone else interested in opening a new business in the area. Well, Governor Andy Bashir's executive order on medical cannabis took effect at the turn of the new year. Now, a group is pushing for legislative reform after noticing what they say is a concerning trend since it arrived a few weeks ago. Lauren Bratcher with Kentucky Normal says approval to get medical cannabis should come from consulting your trusted uh, primary care physician, but instead some people have been getting medical cards or cert uh, certificates specifically for cannabis at a high price. And they're saying we are going to make you legal. You pay us $200, $300, we're going to give you a certification, and that's going to make you legal in the state of Kentucky. A lot of these people are on disability. They have, you know, very strict budgets, and losing, getting, paying two or $300 to what they think is going to be a medical care expense and finding out it really doesn't do them any good. Uh, that, that's, a, that's very, to me, very predatory, and I just, I don't think it's acceptable. Well, she says the cost serves as another reason why her organization hopes medical cannabis will be legalized. She believes that regulating the drug will help Kentuckians to not only pay reasonable prices, but also get the product that's best for them. Former UN Ambassador Kelly Knight Craft is doing what she can to stand out early in the crowded Republican field for governor and is the only candidate on in the air early with a major ad buy. She's also running digital ads, and the latest is called Kentucky's Border Crisis. 
Kraft went to the U.S.-Mexico border to make her newest video in which she says that deadly fentanyl is ending up in Kentucky after crossing the international border. We may not be able to build a wall like this around Kentucky. But my top priorities as governor will secure our state's borders, back up our police. And if you're a drug dealer, I'm coming for you. Kraft is working to get attention and build name recognition in a race that pits her against three statewide office holders. Attorney General Daniel Cameron released polling last week claiming he has a big advantage. Agriculture Commissioner Ryan Quarles' campaign also announced he has the backing of more than 200 local leaders, including about a third of the state's judge executives. State Auditor Mike Harmon has been quietly working behind the scenes. He shook the political landscape eight years ago when he won his first term against a much better funded candidate. In total, 12 Republicans are running, including Somerset Mayor Alan Keck. In nearby West Virginia, Governor Jim Justice held an in-person town hall style meeting Monday night to discuss his proposal to cut the state's personal income tax by 50%. The West Virginia House of Delegates passed the measure last week. If passed by the Senate, taxpayers would see a 30% tax cut when filing their state income tax return next year. That would be followed by 10% cuts the next two years. Well, the governor says he believes it will bring a big boost to the state. I mean, why in the world would anybody think that Jim Justice, the business guy, the business guy that looked at this bankruptcy and drove the boat in every way he could to a situation that we are in today, how on the planet could you possibly think that I want to leave with all with us upside down? Well, those who oppose the plan say it's not fair and they favor a total elimination of the income tax for those earning $80,000 a year or less. Well, the Biden administration is once again calling on lawmakers to take action aimed toward easing gun-related violence in the U.S. This comes after another rash of shootings broke out nationwide the past few days, resulting in numerous deaths and injuries. John Lawrence reports. Come here. In San Mateo County, California, authorities arrest a 67-year-old man accused of fatally shooting at least seven people and critically injuring at least one other. We're working with the district attorney's office um, and uh, we have a collaborative investigation and um, I have all the confidence that um, together we will get to the bottom of this. In Kansas, three deputies and a highway patrol trooper were hurt and a wanted suspect was killed in a shootout in Dodge City, according to a spokesperson for the Kansas Bureau of Investigation. To Johnstown, Pennsylvania, where police say a man was shot and killed by a suspect who ran from the scene, according to CNN affiliate WJAC-TV. Those were among the gun violence incidents reported Monday, and it has some lawmakers in Washington, D.C., calling for action. While the Senate passed bipartisan gun safety legislation last year, and that was a very welcome move, more should be done. President Biden issued a statement on Monday calling on Congress to pass an assault weapons and high capacity magazine ban and legislation that raises the minimum purchasing age to 21 years old. The Gun Violence Archive defines a mass shooting as an incident where at least four people, not including the suspect, are shot. According to the archive, there's been more than three dozen mass shootings in the U.S. since the start of the year. I'm John Lawrence reporting. A 2022 study from the American Academy of Pediatrics said firearm injuries are the leading cause of death for people under the age of 24 in the United States. In international news, New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern attended her last political event before she resigns. On Tuesday, she went to the annual Maori Religious Festival. Well, the incoming Prime Minister, Chris Hipkins, also showed up at the event. Arden's team will end up, will end, uh, term will end January 7th, rather. Hipkins will then be sworn in as the new Prime Minister. Well, back here at home, the Letcher County Recreation Center has been a place for many activities since its opening in 2011. After the flooding in July, officials have been slowly working back to get the facility to where it was before. Our Chandler Wilcox talked to the rec center's director about the recovery process. It was almost six months ago when muddy water broke through the Letcher County Recreation Center doors and covered the first floor. The center reopened to the public earlier this month, but the first floor remains unfinished. 
you know, the downstairs, whether it was the bowling alley or the party rooms or the basketball courts, you know, that was probably half of the people that showed up here. 50% less consumer traffic not only makes the place less busy, but also has cut their revenue in half. We lost our, our wintertime um, youth basketball. Uh, you know, that's, we didn't get a host that this year, you know. Without a basketball court, there's only so much they are able to do because of dangerous spots in the floor. Uh, there's poles that are sticking up where the volleyball uh, used to go through, so we can't really do a whole bunch in here without having a safety hazard. A new court is not exactly easy to come by. Johnson says the number will likely be six digits long. I've never had to replace a basketball court. I can only imagine that it would cost a lot, and it is. It's going to be anywhere between $150,000 up to $250,000 just for the basketball court. Even though a timeline has not been set, people are eager to hear when everything could be finished. Every day there's somebody asking the same questions, you know, when, 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 and, you know, what's taking so long. And again, there's just so much bureaucracy, I guess, that goes on. Again, where we're a government building, it's not like we can just go find the first, you know, contractor to fix it. Johnston says the basketball court is a top priority when it comes to their next steps, but officials are hoping to finish everything as soon as possible. In Letcher County, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Well, the rec center is now open seven days a week. Well, coming up here on Mountain News this morning, could our planet be undergoing a major change? We'll tell you what some Chinese researchers say about the prospect. Enjoy today because the active weather pattern is back tonight. It's not going anywhere for a few days. I have the latest in about three minutes.